every movie can be a box office smash, and that's okay. How much money a movie takes in often has little relation to its actual quality. Plenty of films are just too niche for a wide audience and go on to achieve dedicated cult followings once they're released on home media. But there's a difference between being a box office disappointment and being a box office bomb. And there's an even bigger difference between being a box office bomb and losing your studio so much money that they are forced to declare bankruptcy. And so with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture, here with eight movies that bombed so hard that they bankrupt their studios. Number 8. The Golden Compass – New Line Cinema New Line was on top of the world back in 2007. Since 1967, the production company had built up a reputation for taking chances on oddball films that other parts of Hollywood might pass on. A Nightmare on Elm Street and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles films were their greatest successes until 2003, when they produced the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It was easily their most profitable investment yet, with the films grossing nearly $3 billion worldwide. Riding high on this success, New Line immediately put $180 million towards adapting a another popular fantasy book series for the big screen, Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials trilogy. Unfortunately, this stillborn film franchise did not perform quite as well as they hoped. It only took in $70 million in the United States, and while it performed much better abroad, New Line had sold the overseas distribution rights to fund the film's production. This meant that they never saw a dime of that foreign revenue. This was regarded as one mistake too much by parent company Time Warner, and New Line was swallowed up by Warner Brothers Pictures just two months after The Golden Compass's release. Number 7. The Lady Vanishes – Hammer Productions Hammer Productions and Alfred Hitchcock are two titans of British cinema. Hammer is still known worldwide for its timeless Hammer horror films such as The Quatermass Experiment and Christopher Lee's iconic performance in their Dracula adaptation. Hitchcock is, of course, known for equally well-regarded classics such as Psycho and Vertigo. So you'd think that Hammer Productions remaking a Hitchcock masterpiece would be a recipe for critical and box office success. Sadly, what looks good on paper doesn't always work out so well in reality. By 1979, Hammer's gothic horror films had fallen out of fashion, and they attempted to pivot towards more serious fare with films like The Lady Vanishes. But critics were lukewarm at best towards it, and it didn't exactly make a splash at the box office. This final financial disaster, after a long string of them, forced the studio into a long hibernation. Since a revival in 2007, they have been lending their name to the odd horror release, but they are undoubtedly a shadow of what they once were. Number 6. Looney Tunes Back in Action – Warner Brothers Feature Animation Remember when Brendan Fraser was the big star of the moment back in the early 2000s? After The Mummy hit our screens, Hollywood were determined to push him as the next big leading man and put him front and centre on most of their posters. So what went wrong? Well, apparently starring in movies like this one certainly didn't help. By all accounts, the production was a complete mess behind the scenes. Warner Brothers initially wanted it to be a sequel to 1996's Space Jam, but Michael Jordan refused to sign on again. Then they changed it to Spy Jam and tried to lure Jackie Chan into playing the title role. This also fell through, and eventually longtime Looney Tunes fan Joe Dante was brought on to direct what would become Back in Action. He received absolutely no creative freedom, and the film didn't even make its $80 million budget back at the box office. Office, only managing to pull in $68.5 million. Warner Brothers went from planning to release more Looney Tunes movies as soon as possible to shutting down its feature film animation division entirely. Now, just for the record, I personally love this film. It is my childhood, so I won't hear a negative thing said about it, and that is all. Number 5. It's a Wonderful Life – Liberty Films in the years before World War II, Frank Capra had earned himself the title of Hollywood legend and three Academy Awards for Best Director. After returning from the war, he founded the production company Liberty Films in 1945, along with three other former servicemen. The very first film of the new company was to be It's a Wonderful Life. Unfortunately, while the Christmas classic actually did reasonably well at the box office, it was nowhere near successful enough to recoup its production costs of $2.3 million, and the fledging studio found itself facing financial ruin barely a year into its existence. It was quickly swallowed up by Paramount, who locked Capra and his friends into multi-picture contracts with their studio. Liberty Films would only go on to release one more film under its label, 1948 State of the Union, before finally being dissolved in 1951. 
1981. Capra later wrote of this failed venture that its purpose was to 1. influence the course of Hollywood films, 2. make four former army officers independently rich, and 3. virtually prove fatal to my professional career. Ouch, truly his own worst critic. Number 4. Battlefield Earth Franchise Pictures Say the words box office bomb to somebody and there's a strong chance that this will be one of the films they think of first. John Travolta, a devout Scientologist, had been trying for years to get an adaptation of L. Ron Hubbard's Battlefield Earth greenlit. In 1998, he finally found a financial backer in the newly founded franchise Pictures and things just went downhill from there. Upon its release in 2000, Battlefield Earth was savaged by every critic alive, amateur and professional. Everything from the acting to the direction to the special effects was torn to shreds and the whole fiasco ended up making only $29.7 million against the $73 million budget. John Travolta, newly restored to the spotlight thanks to Pulp Fiction six years prior, found his reputation once again in tatters. The people running franchise pictures were later found guilty of inflating the budgets of the likes of Battlefield Earth and other features to scam investors and filed for bankruptcy in 2007 seven, leaving behind nothing more than a legacy of dodgy dealings and awful movies. Number 3. Mars Needs Mums – Image Movers Digital Robert Zemeckis has had a varied career, to say the least. You'll find well-regarded successes in his filmography such as Forrest Gump or Back to the Future, but you'll also see more than a few misfires like What Lies Beneath or Welcome to Marwen. While he didn't direct Mars Needs Mums, it was made by his company Image Movers as part of a joint venture with Disney and his fingerprints are all over it. The odd motion capture animation that Zemeckis had previously used in A Christmas Carol was on full display again, and it looked just as unsettling here. In fact, the entire thing just looks downright ugly. Audiences seem to think so too, as the movie took in only $39 million against its $150 million budget, which cemented it as Disney's biggest financial disaster ever. Even before the film's release, Disney and Image Movers announced that Image Movers Digital, the division that made the movie, would be closed down. Shutting down your company after your release fails is one thing, but going bust before the movie is even released? That has got to hurt. Number 2. Heaven's Gate – United Artists from the mid-1960s to the early 1980s, Hollywood was a hotbed of experimentation. Legendary pioneers like Martin Scorsese, Robert Altman and Francis Ford Coppola were being given unprecedented freedom to make the kinds of films they wanted to make, free from the studio restrictions of the preceding decades. This era gave us some of the greatest American films ever made, but it all had to end sometime. Still riding high from his Best Picture winning classic The Deer Hunter, director Michael Cimino decided to write a tale about a dispute between land barons and settlers in 1890s Wyoming. Upon its release in 1980, Heaven's Gate was derided by every industry publication as one of the worst movies ever made. The critical thrashing was so bad that United Artists actually pulled it from the theatres after just one week. They attempted to release it again a year later in a slightly shortened director's cut format, but that also performed horribly, only taking in $3.5 million against its $44 million budget. Not only did Heaven's Gate put United Artists out of business, with the failing studio eventually becoming part of MGM, it brought an end to the freedom that Maverick directors had enjoyed in Hollywood for so long. Number 1. Superman 4 – The Quest for Peace – The Canon Group when the first Superman feature film hit cinema screens in 1978, it changed the landscape of film forever. With its groundbreaking use of special effects and genuinely emotional moments, it was the first indication for Hollywood that superhero movies might be worth investing in. Naturally, it was followed by three sequels in an attempt to cash in as much as possible on this new franchise. But being in something only for the money can be perilous. Sometimes you still luck out and get a halfway decent end product, and other times you you get Superman 4. The film looks noticeably cheap the whole way through, a result of having its $36 million budget slashed in half. A particularly hilarious example is a scene in which Superman is supposed to be approaching the United Nations building in New York City. Of course, any viewer with even a vague idea of what that building looks like can see that Superman is not even in America. The scene was in fact shot in Milton Keynes with very little effort made to hide that fact. The Cannon Group teetering on the brink of bankruptcy even with the movie's reduced budget was brought out by Pathé Communications the following year and soon ceased to exist altogether. Not so Superman.
And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.